Hello everyone, I am Anubhav Alia, the Director in Leading Training and Executive Coaching Firm Prisma Philosophy at New Delhi, also an international trainer and an executive coach. As we are focusing on the most important aspect of communication, that is business reports, in today's section we will explore the part 2 of business report focusing on types of reports. After studying this particular session, you will be able to actually enumerate the types of reports and would be able to prepare reports effectively. The report is a statement which is based on facts, events and opinions which serves as a communication to management for decision making. Reports do play a very significant role in the modern organization and effective reports enhances the goodwill of the organization. That's why reports are the conveyor of the information and it helps the management to face the changing environment. The essential of a good report are accuracy, simplicity, completeness, brevity, appearance, readability, reliability, economy, timeliness and logical content. Let's explore the many types which we have on the reports. They are classified on the basis of directions, functions, legality, time and formal relationships. Let's explore in detail various types of these reports. The first one News reports. News reports are published in newspaper to inform the readers about different development taking place in the world. An academic report is a written report incorporating the results of an experiment, study or survey to be presented as a part of the project. It is prepared in a specific format which may differ from different types of academic report. The third one is market survey report, which constitutes an important activity of a business organization. It is the survey and the analysis of the market for a particular product or the service before it is launched. It includes feedback from the target audience such as customer capabilities, buying potential expectations and requirements. An internal inquiry is also carried out by the company to identify the cause of a particular incident of the company such as minor accidents, compromise with the quality of the product, indiscipline by the employees on unnecessary harassment of an employee. A committee is constituted for the purpose submit its report within appropriate recommendations. Let's explore these reports one by one. We will start with news reports. News reports are published in a newspaper. As mentioned, it is to inform the readers about the different developments taking place in the world. A typical news report has the respective structure having headlines, source, date, place and what. News reports begins with an eye-catching headline in bold fonts. It is followed by the source with day, date and place. What includes is the main body of the report giving detailed reasons. Depending on the current importance of the news report length of the description may vary. An academic report is a written document incorporating the results of an experiment, study or survey or to be presented as a part of the project. For an example, dissertation or thesis written to fulfill the requirement of the MPhil or PhD degree respectively are the academic reports. An academic report is prepared in a specific format 
which may differ for different types of academic reports. This particular section of academic research and reports includes our respective reports in the format of introduction, literature review, results, discussions, methods and conclusions. Let us explore them one by one. In the introduction part, the subject undertaken in the studies is briefly introduced along with its contemporary importance. It also includes new dimensions of the subject which is covered in the present studies. In the literature review, the research work done already on the topic is being explored. In the context of the earlier work, research gap is also identified which forms the basis of the problem investigated under the present work. In the results section, the results of the studies are presented in an appropriate format using tables or figures followed by the discussion part. The data are analyzed and discussed. The importance of findings particularly with the reference of the earlier findings are highlighted. In the method section, the methodology followed for the studies is explained. In the case of a survey, the sample size and the procedure for selecting respondents are also described. Lastly, in the conclusion, sections, the summary of the findings and the importance are given. Now, how can you get the answers you need to solve business challenges more quickly is a big question. Syndicated market research reports are the go-to solution for many professionals. Market research reports not only save you hours of time, they also add credibility to your work you do. Whether you are refining your business plan, preparing a presentation for an important client or making recommendation to an executive. Market survey reports constitute an important activity of a business. It is the survey and analysis of the market for a particular product or services before it is launched. These reports include feedback from the target audience such as customer capabilities, buying potential expectations, requirements are some of them. Data are collected about the customer preferences, pricing trends, competing similar products and so on and new strategies are planned to address these requirements. Suppose a company wants to launch an automatic washing machine which consumes much water. Company will ask its marketing team to make a survey about the lot shedding, water supply and buying ability of the customer in that particular area. The question that they can ask and find out why it's important, why it's important to identifying the target market, developing new partnerships, creating relevant promotional materials, developing strategies to outmaneuver competitors and expanding business operations. This would be helpful in decision making. Now, for making a market survey report, we need to follow certain protocols for the preparation. The report should have title, which means, which is the most important aspect of the report, followed by prepared by the name of the person or an organization. It should also include important aspect of summary, which means it should outline the purpose of the study and results of the survey in brief. And it may also include recommendations made. Objective in this section, the objectives of the surveys are listed point wise. It may also include 
reason for the survey followed by the background information. This information forms the basis of the present survey being undertaken. It includes the existing knowledge about that particular subject. Target group. In this section, the demographic regions covered by the market survey is mentioned. To give you an example here, if the survey covers only the males in the age group of 25 to 40 years in the national capital region, this will be called the target group. Target group is selected keeping in view the product service to be launched. The most important aspect is methodology. This section clearly explains how data was collected that is whether it was personal interviews, through a questionnaire, through a telephonic conversation or online survey. There are various statistical methods which are used for analyzing the data and accounting for the inaccuracies which are going to be explained later. Results are the one which actually helps you to share the data which was collected are presented preferably in the tableau format and depending on the requirement. This leads to the discussion. The results are explained in this section. Appropriate figures, bar diagrams may be used to make comparison between different segments of the target group. The importance and the reliability of the results vis-a-vis -vis earlier surveys are also highlighted. Last but not the least, conclusions. The conclusions drawn on the basis of the results and discussions are presented here. It is the fact, the gist of the survey. Not to miss the limitations. The limitations of the surveys are described in this particular section. For an example, if the survey was conducted in the national capital region, it may not work in other parts of the country or it is covers only a particular age group or gender or income group. It may not be valid for the whole society or we also call it the entire population. In this era of vigilant media and uh, strict scrutiny by the government, even a small adverse incident in a company may attract attention to the public. If a prompt remedial action is not taken, it may jeopardize its reputation and goodwill created over the years. While writing an internal inquiry report, you need to take care of particular things which are try to be impartial, try to be professional, use impartial neutral verbs, use exactly descriptive verbs, be consistent in tense, avoid unnecessary adjectives and avoid unnecessary information. A good internal inquiry report should satisfy 3C again. It should be clear, it should be coherent and it should be complete. Which means the clarity, the clear aspect says the language should be clear. That is, there should be no ambiguity. There should be coherence and logic and it should be complete which means should address and resolve all issues. Now there are three parts of an internal inquiry report. The beginning which comprises of executive summary which describes of the complaint incident which is given and it is followed by the description of the policy or a rule in vogue vis-a-vis the complaint. Then the scope of the inquiry is explained. Finally, the ultimate conclusion is given, which means the complaint summary, a brief summary of the complaint incident is given and highlighted, whereas in inquiry summary, 
the procedures of the inquiry is briefly explained. In the conclusion or the recommendations, the conclusion of the inquiry and the recommendations made outlined very religiously. The second part after the beginning is the middle part. It has the respective subsection. The first is the factual background. The complaint made or the incident occurred is described in an appropriate detail. There should be a scope of inquiry which should focus on the mandate which is given should be described. The relevant rules if any under which the inquiry is to be completed should be referred here itself. The evidences and witness are to be taken into account or the version of the witnesses examined should be recorded. The analysis of the evidence which focuses on how the evidences of the statement of the witness were analyzed is described in this particular section. Finally, the third step which is the end. The last section has the following parts which includes findings, conclusion, signature dates and annexure. The findings are basically focuses on the factuals which are explained in this part. The conclusions and the recommendations arrives at the end which is made for the subsequent actions which are given in detail also should be signed by the appropriate authority with the date mentioned on it. Annexures which are the list of documents that is recorded statement of the witnesses, photographs of the locations etc are attached and to be emphasized. The another aspect is reports are the conveyor of the information and help the management to face the changing environment. The essence of a good report are accuracy, simplicity, completeness, brevity and appearance followed by the readability, reliability, economy, timeliness and logical content. With this we complete this section on business reports. Have a wonderful happy learning. Thank you.